What Lake Winnipeg regulation has not stopped, and was never designed to stop, is shoreline erosion and damage from extreme weather. In October 2010, the province of Manitoba experienced what's been called a weather bomb. A major system brought heavy rain, sustained high north winds, and the lowest barometric pressure ever recorded in the province. The sustained north winds resulted in a major wind setup and large waves in the South Basin, causing major damage to public infrastructure and private property. Wind setup occurs when winds push water up against the downwind shoreline. A corresponding wind set down is produced at the upwind end of the lake. These localized changes to water levels happen even though the average or wind eliminated level of the lake remains unchanged. During the weather bomb, the wind setup recorded at Victoria Beach and Gimli in the South Basin was almost five feet above the wind eliminated level, with wave action on top of that. Correspondingly, Montreal Point in the larger North Basin experienced a wind set down of almost three feet. Manitoba Hydro uses data from eight Environment Canada monitoring stations around Lake Winnipeg to calculate the lake level on a daily basis. Measurements from these stations are averaged to create the wind eliminated level used for regulation operation and licensing purposes. Critics of Lake Winnipeg regulation have said that the damage caused by storms like the October 2010 weather bomb have been more serious than they otherwise would have been because Manitoba Hydro is keeping the lake artificially high for power production purposes. But is that actually the case? If we look at the effect of Lake Winnipeg regulation on water levels on Lake Winnipeg, you can see that the long-term average of the lake hasn't changed a whole lot. Prior to regulation, the average water level on the lake was 713.4 feet above sea level, and since regulation, it's about 713.5. So on a long-term basis, it's only about a tenth of a foot higher. What you also see is that we haven't seen the extremely high water levels that occurred before regulation and the extremely low levels. So the range in water levels has reduced. Within that range of water levels, it continues to fluctuate. And the seasonal pattern of the water level on Lake Winnipeg remains the same. Ray Hessline is a former research scientist with Fisheries and Oceans Canada. Now with the Lake Winnipeg Foundation's Scientific Advisory Committee, he believes that simply looking at pre- and post-regulation mean levels doesn't tell the whole story. I thought it would be more appropriate to look at uh, what would have happened to the lake level since 1976 had the uh, regulating uh, structures not been in place. So I went back uh, to look at that and the way I approached it was essentially to build a, a water budget for the lake using the inflows, and, and inflow records are available from Environment Canada also back about 100 years, uh, and using the uh, characteristics of the physical structure of the old outflow and the new outflow, uh, the rating curves essentially for those, uh, to construct the outflow. Uh, and so that, that was the basis of my analysis. Uh, essentially, I, uh, what I've seen was that the the effect on the mean levels of regulation have been uh, very small uh, relative to what it would have been with the old outflow, natural outflow structure. Um, but the, the major impact has been that the regulation has chopped off the, the peaks and the low points, which is not surprising that that's sort of the point of regulation. But I would say that you know, the, the bigger peaks have dropped by six inches to a foot. Um, and of course, in the, in the middle, there's little change. So, I mean, it's hard to be specific uh, without looking at any individual peak. The, the other factor uh, on the mean levels is the amount of water that uh, goes into the lake and has to go out of the lake. And, and uh, we've been in a much wetter cycle really since uh, the early 90s. Um, so the average lake levels have been higher. Uh, and that, that really has little to do with the outflow structure. That's simply a matter of more water coming into the lake. Manitoba Hydro doesn't benefit from having high lake levels on Lake Winnipeg. 
If, uh, if you look at the terms of the Lake Winnipeg regulation license, when the lake level rises above 715 feet, uh, we're obligated by license to go to maximum discharge. So there's no benefit to Manitoba operating at that level, or close to 715 feet for that matter, because when we go to maximum discharge out of the project, that extra water is just going over the spillways on our generating stations downstream. There's no additional revenues from that water. In terms of holding back water in Lake Winnipeg and managing levels, uh, that only comes into play when you're heading into a, a drought condition and you need to protect uh, energy you have in storage to meet the firm demands of Manitobans to reliably you know, produce electricity for our customers. And we have to remember Lake Winnipeg regulation is a part of a larger electrical supply and demand system. Manitoba Hydro being in the north, our load is higher in the winter time, so our peak load and most energy demand is in the winter time to heat people's homes and light their streets. Um, we're tied to a, to a market in the U.S. where their peak load conditions occur in the summertime with air conditioning load. <clears throat> so we have a seasonal diversity. We're out of phase with this market in the states. So effectively what's happened, um, and with the signing of long-term um, export contracts with U.S. counterparts, we flattened out Manitoba's load profile, if you will, over the seasonally, over the year. So the need to have high water levels going into the winter to produce energy for Manitobans has been diminished somewhat because now we're tied stronger to these U.S. Um, markets and we can buy low-cost energy overnight during the winter to augment what we would have needed water supply to supply our generation on the Nelson system. You know, Manitoba Hydro, we often say we don't regulate the water level of Lake Winnipeg. And people always react negatively to that. But it's true because the water level is driven by the hydrology of, of the inflows. We can affect the outflows, which is only one aspect of what's controlling the water level. Water levels are driven by inflows and outflows. We can only control the outflow. Another factor now recognized to contribute to increasing lake levels, albeit more slowly over time, is isostatic rebound. This is the response of the Earth's crust to the melting of the glaciers that covered Manitoba during the last ice age. The weight of the glaciers depressed the land. Farther south, where the ice wasn't as thick, the land was less depressed. As the ice melted and the glaciers receded, the Earth's surface slowly began to float back up. This rebound is happening faster in the north, where the land was more depressed, effectively tipping Lake Winnipeg to the south. The effect of this rebound on lake levels has been estimated at approximately 20 centimeters every 100 years. And while that isn't a lot on a year-to-year -year basis, it does make for some significant changes to the lake over time. Manitoba Hydro's operation of the Lake Winnipeg Regulation Works also has an effect on the 15,000 people who live and work on the Nelson River downstream of Genpeg. We've increased the water levels or the flow going through Cross Lake. And so we've had to do some mitigation work and reach some agreements with the people in Cross Lake, in Norway House and downstream. So in 1991, Manitoba Hydro, together with Cross Lake First Nation, constructed the Cross Lake Weir to help mitigate some of the effects of the project on their community. Since that time, we've been working, trying to reach other agreements with affected First Nations and Cross Lake. In that time, we have reached several comprehensive agreements with several of the bands downstream. But just because we've reached agreements with these communities doesn't mean we're, not gonna, we're gonna stop dealing with the people there. We have a strong group with community relations and Aboriginal relations divisions, and we're gonna be staying in contact with these First Nations and dealing with the impacts of the projects for a long time.